Welcome to an introductory example of acceptance test-driven development, behavior-driven development, presented by Ken Pugh. This is a sample lesson from an online course. To see the full online curriculum, go to atdd-bdd.com. If you want more information on this course, both in person and online, contact ATDD at KenPugh.com. Here's an introductory example. A sample business rule. If the customer rating is good and the order total is less than or equal to $10, well, I'll let you read the business rule. And what I'd like you to do is answer the question, what is a discount for a good customer and a $50.01 order total? So pause this video now and come up with your answer. Welcome back. So what did you come up with? 1%? 5%? Perhaps 6%. What happened? The developer reads that business rule and they think that the discount should be 1%. The tester reads it and they think it should be 5%. When the tester tests the code, they report a defect, the wrong discount. The tester and developer get together and they discuss the defect. And they come up, well, it looks like it must be 6%. They issue that to production and the company goes bankrupt because they're giving too big of a discount. So now, how could we avoid this misunderstanding? Well, we've got our customer, the supplier of that business rule. And what we're going to do is just ask for examples to clarify that. So perhaps we asked our customer saying, given our total is $50.01 and the rating is good, when we compute the discount, then the percent is 1%. And we ask our customer, is that correct? Well, some of you have, may have seen Columbo in either movies or the TV show. Columbo is a detective, and his modus operandi is he goes to a suspect, asks a few questions, and then turns around walks away, comes back, and says, oh, by the way, I just got one more. And that's what you need to do sometimes to get a full picture of a requirement. So you ask a few more questions. Given the order total is $10 and the rating is good, then the percent is 0%. And just maybe one more. Given it's $10.01 and a rating is good, then it should be 1%. And we'll just keep asking enough examples to make sure that we understand the entire business rule. Well, you'll notice that we have repetitiveness here. Well, how can we get rid of that repetitiveness? Let's turn it into a table. Given our order total and our customer rating, when we compute the discount percentage, then this is what we get. Straightforward. A table. That's in the language of business. What do you mean? Well, the language of business is Excel. And this looks just like Excel. So, we make sure that we've covered all of our cases. For those who are testers, you'll notice that we did equivalence classes and breakpoints and so forth. But we're not necessarily the customer needs to know about that, we simply make sure that we clarify all of those issues. So we've got the goods and the excellence. Now we have a set of examples, and we are going to use these as the test of the system. How can we do that? Well, there are four ways we could implement this test. First, the testing script. Second, a program interface a XUnit framework or an ATDD framework. So let's take a look at each of these. 
Suppose that these tests for the business rule were not created until after the code was implemented. Then chances are the only way you'll be able to test it is through a testing script. How does it happen? Well, the tester is going to create a script, usually it's UI based, and log on a customer who's rated good, start up an order, put enough items in the order until the total is exactly $50.01, complete the order, and make sure that it shows a 50 cent discount, which is a 1%. Great! We've got one. Now, we just have to repeat it for five other cases. Carpal tunnel syndrome. Even if we automate this, it is going to be slow because we have to bring up UI screens. And it's going to be fragile because what if we can't find a customer's rate of good? What if our items go away? They're no longer in inventory or available or the price changes so it doesn't come up to $50.01. We need to do this test once, but we should not need to do it six times in a row. So what are the alternatives? Well, we could do a program interface. If we're given those tests before the code is being implemented, then the developers will make the discount method available to the outside world as an external interface. Perhaps we put a UI up. Here we have discount percentage. We have our customer type good and our order total, and it responds with the percentage. Now, all we need to do is run through this GUI six times for each of those elements in the business rule. Well, that's still a UI, but at least it's a bit faster and not tied to what items and what customers we have. There's an alternate way we could do this. We could write a main program that runs in the command line, give it the parameters, and it would output the percentage. Now we could use Ruby, Python, or Perl to automatically run that script six times. This gives us automation through an external interface. That's number two. Number three, we could do an X unit, a J unit, an N unit, or what have you. So we're going to create a class and we're going to do some assert equals that for the 1% should be when we compute a good and a $50.01 discount. What's the issue with this? When I talk to the product owners, especially ones who are not technical, I ask, can you read this? And almost universally they say, no, I don't understand it. So what do we have with J unit and N unit and X unit? We have tests that are automated but do not communicate. And our tests should do both. So let's see at the fourth way. Here is our table. I go back to our product owner or customer and I go, so do you agree with what's in that table? And I say, yep, looks, looks like an Excel spreadsheet to me. So we have order total, customer rating, and discount percentage. Wouldn't it be great if we could automate this, that we could just clap our hands, clomp our feet, and it would be automated? Well, let's try that again. Clap our hands, stomp our feet. Automation. What do we have here? We have five greens and one red. Five greens mean we did that part right. The one red. Well, we expected it should be one, and it actually returned five. So we have a defect. This is in the fit fitness style of an ATDD framework. We have a test that is automatable and also communicates. That's what we want out of our testing. Now, this is not the only framework. Let's show the Cucumber framework. Here's an outline for computing the discount. 
we have, given our total is the order total and our rating is customer rating, when we compute it, then we get our discount percentage. So we have our table and each of those rows looks like the rows in our previous table. I show this to our customer and they go, yep, I understand that. So Fit Fitness, Cucumber, and there are other frameworks. They must communicate as well as automate. So where does this put us on our testing triangle? This is a testing triangle that a pyramid end-to-end -end at the top, or what Google calls large test, unit tests at the bottom, or Google small test, in integration or medium test in the middle. So the testing script is up at the top. It's a UI test. It's a little fragile because it depends on customers and items being in inventory at particular prices. The ATDD tests that we just did are at the bottom. They are quick, efficient, and very little dependency on anything. We need to do the testing script at the top once to make sure that our entire plumbing from the UI all the way down to the business rule is connected together. But we should only do it once and not six times. You'll notice this gives us our pyramid, one at the top, six at the bottom. Now you'll notice that in our test we use domain terms. An acceptance test should use the business domain language. Not insert doubles, but dollars and percentages and anything else like that. And in order to show that we understand the terms, we're going to make up a table or test to elaborate them. For example, on our customer rating, we can make up a table that simply says there are good and excellent customers. And then we go back to our product owner and say, are there any other ratings? Are there poor customers? Are there super excellent customers? And if so, then maybe we should go back to our compute discount business rule and modify it to add those additional customer ratings. So what is the goal of ATDD BDD? It's to replace misunderstanding with shared understanding. An ambiguous business rule can be misunderstood. The acceptance test is our shared understanding. So now try it out. Look at your stories. Identify a couple of domain terms and maybe some values in your stories. And if you've got an obvious business rule in a story, create an acceptance test for that.